This time on Backshed, I got me a Survivor 1974 HQ Holden station wagon. But this episode is completely different. So here's the story. We're on a family holiday. We're going through a small West New South Wales town. There's a heavy vehicle bypass, takes you around the town through an industrial estate. Ton of sheds in this industrial estate. And out in front of one of the sheds, I see three old Holdens. So I pull up, I'm just going to get a phone number off the building and then continue on on the family holiday. Well, that was the plan. So I jump out, I go to get a phone number off the front of the building and the owner comes out. Nice guy, all too eager to talk and said, why don't you get the family set up and come back for a couple of hours and have a look around. That town was actually the town we were staying in for the couple of nights. What was actually there was a panel shop where the three old Holdens were parked and then two big sheds next door with a wrecking yard right across the back of the three sheds. So what was supposed to be a 10 minute look around turned into a couple of hours and there was just cars everywhere. Just for privacy, I didn't video any of it that day, um, but we did buy that HQ on that day. Now, being a on a family holiday, went back, finished our holiday, and about seven days later, I went back with the trailer to grab my HQ wagon, and that's what we'll pick up. This is what we've got today. Two hundred two red motor. Somebody's already had a bit of a go at her. And Qualam automatic. Three-speed automatic. Yeah, we'll hit you up. She was very complete under the bonnet. Hadn't been messed with that much. So generally you just pop a battery in it, pull it in first gear, wind the key and try and wind it onto the trailer. But this one's auto. So I took some fuel, a few tools, and I thought, why not try and start it? So basically what I did was disconnect the fuel line, try and fill the carby up, and you know what, instead of telling you, how about I just show you? So as I said, she's pretty complete. You could tell someone's had a go before the fuel line's disconnected, but I'll show you quickly the process I went through. So first thing was basically just try and roll it over. Put some tension on the fan belt and roll him over. And you'll see the balancer there is actually turning over. So with it rolling over, you know it's not locked up. So chuck the battery in. Then just flick the key on inside, see if you got dash lights and see if it's going to burst into flames. We had dash lights at the time, so I knocked the air cleaner off. Now there's two ways you can fill the car be full of fuel is through the intake line there, which will go through the needle and seat, or straight down that vent tube. Now I disconnected the fuel line because I didn't want anything that was in that pump, if it worked, to end up traveling in there. So I've disconnected that guy and I'll fill it full of fuel. So if you're gonna go in through the, the fuel line, just knock that little fitting out. And in a little Stromberg, that's where your needle and seat is. So your needle is going to be just behind this fitting. There. That's your needle and seat. So that's essentially filling the fuel bowl 
and that'll give it enough to at least start to pop now i will say the first time i, I rolled this over it took six or seven goes before it really wanted to fire and even then it didn't run well but we'll give it a crack See if I can get it to run a little bit longer. It's actually running better now than it did on the day. So anyway, you get the picture. It ran. I didn't say it ran well, it just ran. It ran enough, maybe on five cylinders, just enough to start it in neutral, pull it into drive, and you just get enough revs to launch it about two meters. Now I did that five or 20 times and actually got it onto the trailer. But that didn't really shock me because these old six cylinders, they're pretty hard to kill. That has been sitting for a fair while and the only reason I know that is I got a bit of a, a nudge in the ribs from one of the guys that worked at the panel shop and he said I may or may not have been called a, a bit of a madman for even wasting my time to try. So they were pretty surprised to see the thing. Although it took a few goes, it, it, it drove on. I'm saying it drove. It, it drove poorly, but it drove. So that's her all loaded up. We're out sort of west New South Wales. Turns out she's a 74 built HQ. the Kingswood trim level all itched up ready to come back to life but I'll show you around some of the other gems out here H2's panel van another H2's body take a look over there Chandra, but she's pretty rusty. She's got a bit of cancer in it, so they've started to put a frame in it, so, so they can start to cut sills and quarters off. She's about 60 metres behind me. It's a big shed with a spray booth, so she's definitely in the right spot come back to life. I don't know if you can see that, but she's JG65. Now if you're not a Falcon Tragic, I'll save you the trouble of googling JG65. It's a Falcon 500, just a basic coupe, but I can tell you one thing, it's a million percent better than the coupe we had way back in episode one. Still a few gems here to go. And this is a good car too. Told it's a one owner. Okay, so then we're allowed inside one of the sheds. Now, I didn't film this with the intention of making a video out of it. I filmed it because of my shit memory. I wanted to be able to go back and have a look at exactly what was and wasn't for sale after we had a conversation. 
and also what I can and can't afford because there's a lot there I can't afford. But just so after the conversation, I go back and go, oh, yep, that's that one, that's that one. I said, I know that's a lot to take in in one go, but at the start there, it's a V8 four-speed hatchback Tirana. Uh, then back on the ground, a Cadillac EH, um, a row with a HZ EK 57 Chevy windowless van. But there was also more cars on my far right, one of which we actually did buy, and we'll get to that later. And there was a second row behind the HZ, the EK, the 57, there was another row HG, um, a Holden Montana, and a HT Ute, I believe. Then heading further towards the back of the shed, you'll see a Commodore, a Tirana, um, a KE30 two-door Corolla, which was kind of cool, um, a HZ Premier Wagon, Then over the left side of shed, um, which is a mix of two of these cars have actually been restored and although covered in dust, have mint paint jobs. One's in the process and then there was a couple of bodies, including a charger, which I was pretty keen on. But I think the price tag on that one is a little more than I can scrape up at this point. Now, I'll take you back one step, because I got that excited when I saw this car. I took some photos of the plates on it, and thought I pressed record, but I took a terrible photo of it instead of actually recording it. If I go back and show you this section, you see in the background the one with the bonnet up. That is a 74 HJ GDS Monaro, a 308 Turbo 400 car. It's in pretty bad shape but it's the real deal. one for you Commodore fans there's an old clubby I don't know what year model was but I'm sure you can tell from the front end and whatever now the owner at this point had to get back to getting something done and said look knock yourself out go out the back wander through the wrecking yard that's exactly what I did now I know this footage might be a little bit long-winded I'm not gonna go through every car on there but um, I think I was commentating to myself more than anyone so if I dribble on a bit Hey, it's a decent watch. There's some pretty good stuff out there, including an XBGS. I'm still verifying the, the plates, but the car is a 250 high compression motor, four speed, um, and it's got a taco dash. So anyway, take a look. There's some old carcasses here too. A lot of Valiant stuff. But she's still got some good panels and there's still a motor in there. The place is getting cleaned up and it's got no on some of the windscreens so I guess that means no don't take them to scrap. All the old stuff is going out to a farm and it's going to be pulled down for rust cuts and chrome so nothing's going to go to waste. And all the new stuff is going to go to waste.
in a lot of cases out there, there's bodies that have been parted out back before they're worth anything. And that last gold HZ was one of those cars. It was actually a pretty good body. And I definitely think there's enough parts out there on other HJ through to Zs um, to piece together a complete car. And that might be something we go back to do. I like these and the idea of a little Windsor V8 in them. <laughs> She's got airbags. That's fairly complete, that thing. She spent a bit of time as a shooting buggy, but look at that. Old EH wagon. Oh, EJ. EJ wagon. Another old Val. Mainline. The stupid thing is, there's still parts on that. It's still not junk. These are all going out to a farm to be lined up and parted out correctly. Drop on that Falcon U. I'll have a look on the radio to support in a minute. But there's still good bits on even that thing, it's rotted out completely, but there's still trims around the vinyl roof. I haven't counted the valves, I probably should have started counting. Another old value. Another old holding in the grass there, like an EK. Maybe an FB. Valve full of parts. We had a FJ45, old F truck over there, F100. Another XB, we'll go over there. So I don't know how I can get over to that XB. That's what I say about there's still parts. Half decent steering wheel. 
this good fascia. That could be it, but another XB over there. HD or HR, I don't know, can't tell. Another XB Ute, EH on top, another one underneath. We'll go over there. Another old QE wagon. I need a window out of that. XR6. Another old Holden. Another valve there. Check this out. I think she's in. I think that's got a pop off. Yep, check this out. Definitely a taco dash. The standard Falcon's going to have a one. One section across the middle there, not three. So that's probably the steering wheel. Six cylinder. And no GS bonnet. No GS bonnet, so I don't think she's a factory GS. But she's still got the taco dash, you know. Now just at a glance on the plates on the on the Falcon there, you can see it is a 250 high compression six cylinder, a four speed car. It has got a taco dash and has got what looks like a GS steering wheel. Uh, with GSs, they don't actually give you an option on the plate. And I've heard on some of them there's a tag on the radiator support. I didn't see anything, but I have got the VIN there. I will find out what's going on with that one. Hi. That is a cool looking old car. A lot of time when you see videos like this, you think, what a waste. But like I said, these are all going out to a farm. And the gentleman that owns them, is going to spend his retirement parting them out for their strips panels, saving what he can, panel better and painted by trade. So they're going to be saved or help save other cars. I can't get over that GS dash in that, uh, in that XB though. And right about then, it pissed down on me. So I grabbed my HQ, headed home, but that isn't where it ended. I had one little job to do. Well, I don't know if it was a little job. If you remember from a previous episode with the XY when we took it to the drags, I said this. But I'll tell you one thing, when we get back from the drags, I know one thing that's going to get repaired, this trailer. It is sad. It's had everything on it. It's done so much work for me, I think it's time for a birthday. It is, it's pretty sad. I actually felt pretty bad putting the XY on it. She is pretty sad. She's been through a lot, that old trailer. And I've had some pretty creative ways to load cars onto that trailer. Some of which could only be described as borderline of sketchy. So with that, We'll give the trailer a bit of a birthday and head back out.
train is dead set getting beyond a joke. Every time I touch that welder. freshened up but I don't think you can fully understand how excited I am about that all right let's get back out there so I get back out there everything's changed and we're talking maybe 12 days later everything's changed to the point where both the storage sheds are completely vacant and the new tenants are moving in out the back in the wrecking yard every car from the back of those two sheds have been moved some of the old bodies have been compressed into the yard behind the panel shop piled up but there was still stuff i was finding that i didn't see the first time She's rusted, piled up on top of some junk. When it comes down, I'll, I'll check some numbers. It's coming down because it's going out the farm to get wrecked. Now I did check the numbers on that one and sure enough, it's a VF pacer. And there was ones that I saw the first time, but wanted to have another quick look at because I was pretty keen on this one. I think I'm gonna grab this little fella very complete just look around like it's unbelievable what's here but the one i went out there to pick up on that day because it was in the storage shed had already been moved out to the farm where they're all headed and so i couldn't actually film out there but I'll give you a look around the car. So this is the one I bought the day we picked up the HQ. It is an EK Holden, but it's wearing an FB front. Difference in the EK to the FB is the FB indicators are out wide, the EKs are in a little narrower, and I think the overriders are different as well. Definitely not the cheapest one I've ever bought, but it's a good solid car. She's obviously had a little bit of a checkered pass with the different front on but she's solid as bottoms of the doors are good and that's the bit that surprised me inside the doors are good very cool old dash in these things she's a three speed I think they had an option in this model for, for an auto. Trims and all this, well, I was going to say all the seats are there, but they're obviously out of different cars. And the trims are blue. I don't know if that's the original colour. You'd assume it would be this green. That's a lot of green. A little bit of shit down there. She's a bit of an unfinished project. There's a few repairs that have gone on. Another one there on the roof. But she's mostly complete. Bit of a sketchy door there. One reason I shook the man's hand and didn't whinge too much about price is there is not a 
hole in those sills they are solid and it's already got floor pans in it i wouldn't say they're perfect but they're in there they're steel they're a bit surface rusty and shit so they've obviously been in there for a while that's all good and that flat tire and under here is the reason I knew I was going to need a winch she's got a fair bit of stuff missing no distributor cap and leads that water pump sounds seized up the brakes are not locked on but obviously those two need replacing but that's our EK should be a full episode shortly but we did actually buy two other cars that day. One, of course, was a little Falcon Ute, and the other one's a Valiant. So that was the last two weeks of my existence, and I loved every second of it. I was like a kid in a candy store. I was, I was literally beside myself. There was two of me. There was like one here and one here. I was, I was beside myself. It was that exciting for me. Hopefully there's been something in it for everyone. It doesn't matter what you're into, what make, what model, whatever. Hopefully there was something to interest in that. Um, do hit the buttons and stick around. There's two full episodes coming very shortly, but I hope you liked the one that was a bit different. Hey, uh, see you next time and thanks for watching.